So we're here with Matt Miller. He's the uh, president of HMS, which is the company that is now uh, offering and running the ferry services from San Juan de Cataño and vice versa, and from Ceiba to the island municipalities of Vieques and Culebra. Uh, Mr. Miller, thank you so much for your time. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you uh, for taking the time this morning. I appreciate it. Uh, likewise, let's get right to it because I have a couple of questions. Um, okay. I, 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 I have a feeling that the San Juan to Cataño service is running fairly well, right? So we can maybe just touch upon that and then skip right over to Seba. Yeah, we can. Um, uh, so I, that's a, a great lead in question just to get you up to, to date on where we're at with the transition. We've mm -hmm. made a lot of progress. We are not yet operating the service in San Juan. Oh, you're not. Okay. We're not, but we are operating part of the service out in Seba. So where we're at overall in the, the first phase is three years long, right? For the contract, we're trying to get it done as quickly as possible. We've done a lot of work in the last eight months since we've been, uh, been down here working since the contract started. Um, what we're doing in uh, the Metro service right now is we've assessed the facilities and we've assessed most of the vessels and we're reviewing those assessments with ATM to figure out what additional work needs to be done to the facilities and to the vessels to get those assets up to the right standard. Okay. And this is our opportunity as a partnership to get those assets to the right standard. Um, so we, which is a huge hurdle just to get the assessments done. We've also implemented the ticketing system uh, in Metro service and the island service as well. We'll talk okay. about that. Uh -huh. uh, we have um, updated signage and logo and a, basically a nice facelift that will be coming to the Metro service uh, when? Within, the next, uh -huh. within the next three weeks. Okay. Um, that, that should be happening, including some additional customer service tools uh, for that service, meaning uh, kiosk, uh, information kiosk, um, that riders can can see what's what when the vessel where the vessel's at in the route, what's available in Catano and San Juan nearby, okay. um, and also uh, terminals uh, so they can get information as well. And this this those same tools are going to be uh, implemented in, in Seva as well in the next three weeks. I thought that that an announcement had been made that you were already um, running San Juan. I don't know where that may have come from. Yeah, no, I think maybe maybe where the confusion was with the, the um, we've implemented the ticketing there. And even that, we haven't taken that service over yet because first, before we sign a charter and we assume responsibility for the vessel or for the or for the uh, facilities, you know, we're going to work, ATM and us are going to work together to fix those assets to the proper level that everybody you know, uh, mm -hmm. deserved, right, before we, we assume that. So. Have you been able to, you know, in the time that you've been in there, have you been able to assess how much money, how much work is needed in San Juan? Yeah, uh, I don't I don't know about the amount of money, but our initial uh, assessment, and again, we're working with ATM, reviewing that uh, actually now, it's, on, it's ongoing, right? Um, I, I don't believe that those facilities are, will need much work. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, that's beyond normal capital work, you know, and a lot of this is also just establishing with ATM what the long range maintenance plan for these facilities mm -hmm. are to ensure that, for example, if the roof on the San Juan terminal, you know, has a 30 year life and it's at year 15, we know, OK, in about 10 years, we need to start planning the replacement for that roof. So we can right. put that on the replacement schedule. Part of it is developing also a long-term maintenance plan, capital plan for the boats and the facilities, both in Metro and out of the island service as well. Have you already determined if there's a need for you to bring in a boat for that route? No, there, there won't be. I, oh. I'm confident about that. Yeah, okay. I'm confident about that. Okay, so why don't we hop on over to Seba? Um, okay. I, I need to preface these questions by telling you that I'm I am part of several groups of residents of Vieques and Culebra who depend and use the ferry service on a daily basis. Um, you know, the complaints and the unhappiness is there. Um, the people, uh, you know, 
see the boats breaking down. They, they experience the delays and um, they're angry a lot of the time. So can you explain what's happening with your participation in the Vieques Ceiba Culebra service? Yeah, so an update on the transition out at the island service is we started, well, a, a couple of things. Let's just first start with the, the, sh the short term. You know, I, I think when I talked to you last, I was very clear that, you know, the fix 50 years of neglect is going to take time. It will not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. I've been very honest and open about that. Um, and that said, what, when we got down here, what we initially did and in working with ATM is, you know, we quickly saw that there was a need to bring additional short-term uh, uh, vessels, vessels to yeah. the service. Right. To, provide, to provide some stability to the service and some capacity. So if one boat goes down, another, there's no long-term lapse in service. The people can still get to the islands. None of the charter vessels that are down here are vessels that anybody would ever uh, want to be part of the long-term solution for this right. island service. So I'd be very, I, very I think, clear. I think people have noticed that. They, they've actually said that they're not really made for those waters. Yeah, um, well, they, they're, they're operating safely. They, they, they're, they're, the Coast Guard wouldn't allow them to operate if they weren't safe for those waters. And we wouldn't have them down here if they weren't safe for those waters. Now that said, are they vessels designed for this route? Absolutely not. None okay. of those vessels are. They're, they're not. But you know what we saw is, we need that additional capacity down here to stabilize and provide the people of Vieques ways to get to and from so they're not stuck. And I think, you know, if you look back, you know, in the last five months, there's been very few times where people have been stuck. Now, some vessels have broken down, right? And that happens. Yeah. But the and good thing is, the good thing is, is there's other vessels to pick up the slack. And that's, that's been a, a, a good thing. The but Islandia... But and I and I thank you for that. But I have to interject because from what I've seen from the comments from people, there are many issues still with cargo, um, and, and that's a problem for them, obviously. Yes, I, I I agree. And I said I was about to say, you know, since the Islan Islanos come back, that that has helped because mm -hmm. there's clearly a need for cargo. And I would mm -hmm. add that there are two more additional cargo vessels. Um, like the Mr. Mason and mm -hmm. um, the, the Lady Eve that will be down here within the next two to three weeks and okay. will be added to the fleet as well. So those two cargo vessels will come. Where will come are they? Where are they now? They're they're in uh, just outside of New Orleans, getting new improved ramps put on. Okay. So awesome. it's the it's the same company that provides the, the Mr. Mason, okay. and when us working with that company, to so look the the ramp that's on the Mr. Mason is not very good. You know, mm -hmm. cars bottom out. So let's redesign that ramp so the two vessels that come down have a proper and more improved ramp. And that's what they're in the final stages of that, getting the Coast Guard approval on those ramps and the stability of the of the vessel. And they've had to deal with, you know, storms as well yeah. uh, up in the Gulf, uh, just like down here. But those vessels, both those vessels should be down here to add to the fleet. Um, okay. within the next couple of weeks. So there'll be so, three cargo ships in the rotation. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Correct. And then how many of those, if any, will be able to dock in Mosquito? Because that was something that apparently was initial, uh, you know, initially done and then it didn't work because of the ramps. Some Something like that? Yeah. Well, the, the Lady Eve can dock at Mosquito. It can. Okay. It can. Right, because it does not have a ramp, so it, okay. it can dock. It can dock a mosquito. Now the other, the the two that are coming down have a ramp, so they'll they'll um, dock downtown. Downtown. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in two to three so, weeks. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's where I was going. So one of the things is what we saw was we need capacity down here. It's clear that we need to get capacity down here, get some redundancy in the system, and I, you know by the middle of September, there's going to be more boats in the ATM fleet that it's probably ever had in its existence. Middle of September, of middle of September. Okay. Yeah. These dates yeah. are, gonna... these dates are crucial. And that's why I repeat them because yeah. people need to know when their problems are going to start being solved. Yes. You and know? then on top of that, we've been working with ATM 
closely to get the two vessels that are in the yard, uh, the Cayo Norte and the uh, um, Cayo Norte, and there's another one. Yes, I'm, I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> the two vessels in the yard in Tampa, we've been working closely with ATM to get those finalized and get those vessels out of the yard. And, and those, you know, and our, our view is we, we believe that those vessels will be out of the yard probably in November, okay. right? So, so in November, can, you're going to have two more vessels coming, okay. coming down. The and that's and place. that's right right prior to, you know, um, high season for tourism on, on both Correct. islands. Now, we've been Correct. talking about Vieques. Um, does the same apply for Culebra? Because... Yeah, the vessels are, well, you know, are for the, the, okay. the, the entire uh, I, uh, island fleet. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know... So, the, and uh, and I'm ahead, sorry, just... Is, so just to be clear, so out of the out of the vessels right now, we have a mix of who's operating them, right? The Islan, Islanio, the, the ATM is operating, um, the Julia Lee and the Mister Mason, Puerto Rico Fast Ferries is operating. Okay. The Summer Wind Breezy Point and the Lady Eve, we are operating. The hmm. the two vessels that will be coming down, we will operate. And then we have a passenger only vessel that will be down here as well. That's very similar to the Julia Lee. That'll be down here in mid September as well. And we will also operate that. And then eventually, so that, so the, the, for a while, there'll be three different operators, you know, mm -hmm. operating, mm -hmm. but ATM is still in charge of scheduling the vessels, um, uh, adding the vessels to the fleet and so forth until we get to the point where we assume all the operations and we're getting there. But part of it is first, we want to get all these vessels down here and operate, which, which we're doing. And yeah, more yeah. vessels are, are coming. So that's, that's good for everybody. And definitely you need to have backups because if one of these vessels breaks down, you need to be able to fill that hole quickly. Right? Absolutely. And that's what this will do. And that's a great, that's a great improvement for the people who live on the Island. Uh, primarily, and then also for the visitors, but primarily for the people who live on the island. Now they 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 can see. I mean, shoot, in in November, you know, I think we're gonna have nine vessels in the eighteen. Yeah, that's week. what I was gonna ask you. How many? Nine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's that's that that's good. And the good thing is, we'll be able to keep those vessels again, not vessels that are designed long term for the service, but what it will do, it will allow us now to take the time to finish assessing the ATM boats, working with ATM to get those boats to the proper level mm -hmm. um, to where we can then operate and maintain them for the next 20 years, you know, and that those vessels are good vessels for the, for, for that service. Do you think, do you think that they'll last that long though? Because some of these oh, boats are old. <laughs> so I think I mentioned this to you before, you know, the average age of our, of the vessels that we operate and maintain are well over 30 years old. Right. You did mention you know, that. You I mean, know, we, we operated a, a vessel in New York City seven days a week, 18 hours a day, 365 days a year that was 65 years old. <laughs> and it had a reliability rate of 90, 98%. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, and, it, and, and, and you know, the, the New York uh, harsh winter weather on top of that. So my point is, you know, these, the ATM vessels that are currently in the fleet they're, they are clearly um, uh, young enough to where they have a, so, a very long life. Vessels should last a long time. And these, you know? and these are really, they're workhorses because, you they, know, they're, they're running these routes every day, all day. Um, so, so one of the important aspects, and I ask you, you know, it will be maintenance. Do you have a crew, you know, maintenance crew? Yeah. Do you have the facilities? Uh, how, how is this going to work? Yes. So it, the same way it does at all of our other locations that, again, that operate, you know, um, the same amount of time. And that is, and we've already started to implement it in the vessels that we're operating, a, a maintenance program that, that provides your, your, your daily maintenance, your weekly maintenance, your quarterly maintenance, and then your long-term maintenance. Your, your, your every two years when the vessel has to go to the yard, it starts developing what that work that work list is for the yard work, mm -hmm. right? And it, and it plans it all out and um, down to what you do almost every day on the vessel. And, you know, if you look at our, our fleet, you know, of, you know, of, 
shoot between New York and the rest of our our vessels. We have like 50 vessels in our fleet that mm. run ferries, and you know, and this maintenance program works. And that's something that's been lacking. They can not not as a result of you know the of, of anything of anybody that's currently an ATM. So don't don't get me wrong. I think that the engineers are working hard to keep the vessels going. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a lack of trying, but it's 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 hard to um, create a system if you don't have any expertise in it. And we, um, we, we what we what we bring to that's what we bring to the table is this this depth of experience in in managing a maintenance program. And a vessel maintenance program is totally different than an aircraft maintenance program or a bus maintenance program. It has its own challenges because of all the elements that the vessel. That well, the vessel, and, and uh, it's also about money. The ATM with. has had money issues um, for a very well, long time. Well, I, I, I would agree to disagree with you on that one. Okay. You know, Why? I, I think, I, I do think, again, not from anybody that's currently here, but if you look at the amount of federal grant money that that the Puerto Rican government ATM has received, the amount of money that they've had to operate and maintain, that's that money's not been a problem. It's how the money's been managed in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's proper, it's proper uh, planning, for example, for the yard availabilities uh, when a vessel goes to a yard in Tampa, for example. Mm -hmm. I would say just start off if the maintenance facility here in Isla Grande, here in San Juan, was up and it had a lift capable, which it has. Yeah, you wouldn't have to send them anywhere. You wouldn't have, we to, don't send have to send them anywhere. Yeah. This is what I keep, this is what I keep telling people. So the, the money that, that Puerto Rico's sending to Tampa, we could we could do here at our base that we own, that we operate. I mean, we meaning the Puerto Rican government owns it. Mm -hmm. And we could have those. There's no reason why we can't have skilled laborers here in, in San Juan, the welders, the, the pipe fitters, the carpenters, you know, the painters, mm -hmm. all, all the people that go into a shipyard. You know, there's no reason why we can't have it here. So part of it is because the boats have to go to the states because the maintenance facility is not working, increases the cost. Yeah. Uh, on top and the of time. That, there and the, the time. <laughs> the, the yard, the yards specifications aren't necessarily well defined, and because of that, and and staffing issues, the the yard availabilities seem to take a lot longer than any yard. Right. They they shouldn't take a year. Our experience is two and a half to three months. You should be done, and the boat should be back in service. Yeah. From the yeah. time the two vessels that are currently in cert that are in the yard in Tampa, for example, it'll be a year before since they were dropped off mm -hmm. so so again so it's not money right and that the yards didn't get paid for that but it didn't need to be a year it should mm -hmm. have been three months maybe three and a half months four months tops mm -hmm. um so all so again it's it's not money and again this is not a at all an indication of anybody that's currently trying to in our partnership because mm -hmm. they get it and they're working we're working together to hurry up and get those boats back into service. So. Okay. And speaking of service, this is another aspect of it. Um, ticketing. There are many questions about ticketing. Uh, I think one of them is, you know, the who gets to buy what and when. For example, I've seen people complain about the fact that they can't buy tickets um, in advance for maybe two weeks or three weeks. They go into the website and the ticketing sales, the ticket sales are closed for however long amount of time. So, you know, what's going on with ticketing? What another great question. So where we're at with ticketing, it was never contemplated that we would provide a ticketing system to ATM until after we assumed responsibility for and it was our agents, you know, HMS agents, HMS using the system, HMS, making sure that the system is being used properly, you know, until we were doing it. But because we wanted to do as much as we can early on and the old system, their license was expiring. So ATM asked us to provide the system that we were going to use to them much earlier. Mm -hmm. And we did. We jumped through a lot of hoops and we were happy to do it to provide ATM the current system. Mm -hmm. So ATM has the current system. A 
HMS has trained them on the system. But all these policies, that's not HMS. So when tickets can be sold, that's ATM. Okay. If you go up to the ticket window, those are ATM employees. They're not HMS right. employees, right? We provided them a new tool, a, a new ticketing tool, the system to use until we take over. Then once we take over, then it will be our employees and us doing it. And that's so, when you'll have a say? Is that when you'll have a say in you know what gets sold when and to whom? Correct. Correct. When is that? When will that be? Well, it's when we take over the SABA facility and that probably, you know, we've conducted the assessment of the SABA facility. And again, I think the, the facilities are actually in, in not that bad of, of, of shape uh, of, of things that need to get done. There's some cosmetic things and some customer service things to be done, but, you know, the actual structures of the facilities are actually in, in, in fairly good shape. Well, they're so, supposed to be fairly new. I mean, that's why yeah, they moved so we'll, from Fajardo. So Right. You know, so that'll expedite that. I, I wouldn't want to give you a time frame, but I mean, it's not going to be within the next couple of months. So it, it's, not hoping, year, it's not before year's end. Uh, we're pushing for our goal. I'll tell you what our goal is. Our goal and ATM's goal as well is for us to have the facilities in the metro, in, the, in both the metro and the, but primarily in the island service by the end of the year. Okay. So when you walk up to the counter, it's an HMS employee that you're interacting with okay. when you're out when we're loading the the vessels it, it's our customer service folks that are helping you get on the vessel okay so that's our goal by the end of the year and i i, I feel confident we can get there but the, you know as you know there's gonna be a whole lot of things that we have to get done to get there but i i do think we will get there so back to your question mm -hmm. so a lot mm -hmm. of these things are are policy issues and on how atm is using the system right and um, we're providing them advice on how to use the system. But a lot of these, these things are, um, um, if the system's not used right, well, the, I'll just say this, it, it's impossible to oversell a, uh -huh. a, a route. So what happens though, if, if, if there's a breakdown in how people are being loaded and the tickets aren't scanned, it is possible for more people to mm. say that they should be on the eight o'clock sailing to Vieques, then tickets that were sold and seats, right? But so I, under, I understand that. But the problem yeah. is that the tickets aren't being sold. Like, for example, you have tourists coming in today or tourists planning to come to Puerto Rico today who knew about this a month ago, but they weren't able to buy a ticket to go to Vieques because the system was not available or was shut down or whatever well, term no, they want to use. Just to be very clear, the system is working. The system provides so it's not, it's, ATM, okay. ATM the ability to, to, to sell tickets based on the, the number of seats and the vessels that are that are so they're the, not, on the schedule. So are they not looking to the future? Is that what it is? I mean, th there has I, to be I, an explanation wanna, for why yeah, tickets I, aren't available. I yeah, I, I wouldn't want to speak uh, for, for ATM on that. I think it's best to okay. probably ask ATM. Okay. Uh, uh, about that because you know I'm not in the so let me the let me let me phrase it differently in New York okay where you run uh, the system and you're the boss do yes. you sell tickets way in, in advance like if I'm if today is August you know 17 and I want to buy a ticket for December 25th can I do that uh, uh, most of our job sites are first come first serve it's okay. unusual you can buy a ticket well well in advance. that well, well in advance okay okay yeah. so that yeah. what that wouldn't be different for Puerto Rico probably right right the the buying in advance part of yeah it. yeah way yeah, in I advance. Mean, we do like for example on our job site in um uh, at one of the locations we we run an operation in St. Petersburg mm -hmm. uh Florida between St. Pete and Tampa and it's passenger only it's a vessel similar to the just like the Julia Lee actually and um, that you you buy in advance you buy for a, a seat for a specific route in a specific day and we use the same system and it works fine okay it, we never have a problem of of people showing up that have a ticket that can't get on the boat okay the other thing so. is that people are saying is that they so they can't buy it online and then they're being told that they need to buy it at the window and then they go to the window and they're being told that it's sold out. So there's something happening with the ticketing and people are obviously upset. And the truth is that they're blaming HMS because, the, you know, the overall impression is, is that the system has already turned, been turned over to the private partner. 
and, 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 and yeah, and that's unfortunate. And, you know, and that just, it comes with the territory of, 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 uh, of this. And, you know, I, I, my, I understand why people are frustrated, mm-hmm. you know, and I understand why they, they think. Me too, and I'm not be... even them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I and, mean... and I understand where they, why they think it might be the result of, of HMS doing something wrong. I get that. And that's why we, we haven't pushed back because I, we view us as partners with, with ATM. And collectively, if, if one of us two is, is um, not providing the service, it, it's a reflection on both of us and I, right. I you know right. I take I take some responsibility for that right yeah so yeah. um but the point is you know th- those are a lot of a- those are ATM uh questions that I, I, I no I and, I, and I will ask them now let me ask you one that I think is, okay. is is up your alley when you take over the ticketing system um will the HMS employees be new hires or will you be given the opportunity to ATM employees to fill those jobs so our 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 hiring policy is, and we we currently now have forty five total employees, um, and all forty four of them are from here. I'm the only one not from Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, all the other uh, forty four employees are all from down here, and they are a mix of prior ATM employees, um, some Puerto Rico fast fare employees, and probably a third employees that are that just want to get into this business. Okay. And we've been, our candidates that we've, that we review for each position have been spectacular. Um, and the, the folks that we have hired are, are top notch and we're very happy with that. Um, which is, which is good. So mm-hmm. how we're going to do all of our positions, including the, the, the ticket agents is, you know, we put out, okay, we're going to be hiring five ticket agents. Mm-hmm. Everybody can apply, including the current employees. And then we will, we will um, evaluate who is the, the best candidate for those okay. positions. So if they're not hired by you, well, do they just remain at the ATM and other positions perhaps because. Well, I, again, it's an ATM question, but my yeah. understanding of it is, is they're provided several options. I think okay. uh, early, okay. an early retirement or early out. Or they're guaranteed employment within my understanding is within another government. Agency. I see. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. the single employer thing. Okay. Correct. Um, yeah. Because the reason why I ask you is because there are also many complaints about treatment, the treatment that um, residents and visitors get at the ticket window. Um, and so I'm just wondering what kind of criteria you're going to be using, and whether you, you know, you're considering keeping these people, and if you are you know, whether they'll be retrained or retaught, you know, how to, well, we, <laughs> you know, yeah. deal with people. And yeah, tourists. no, that, well, that's, that's important. And I, we, we have a, a long, rich history of our company is, is founded on customer service, right. And, and experiences and, and providing, whether it's a, a five minute ride on a boat or a five day cruise on one of our cruise ships is provide each passenger, the same world-class respectful experience um, from the time they arrive to the to buy a ticket to the time they get on the boat to the time they get off the boat and they get in their car or the bus and 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 and, and leave and they should be treated with respect and, and that's our one of our core values and that's what I think if you if you look at the employees of the vessels that we're operating I'm I, I'm proud to say that I, I would challenge anybody to say any of our employees that not treated people with respect and, and been helpful and provided world-class customer service. Our goal, and I'm very confident we're gonna be able to do the same thing at the terminals, all the terminals, mm-hmm. Calabria, mm-hmm. Vieques, Saba, Catania, San Juan, mm-hmm. wherever it is, and on board our vessels and in the waiting areas and while they're boarding, you know, and be able to help and answer questions and provide and, and provide good experience. And I, you know, I've witnessed it out there as well. And it's not necessarily. And I, I think ATM would probably tell you that, you know, that's that's something that they're um, will be happy that we take over as well to provide. Uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah, ticketing, a, a ticketing, is, ticketing is is basic. Um, I have one yeah. last question because I and I appreciate yes, your ma'am. time. We, we're we're way into half an hour, but thank you. No, um, no worries. So you said that 
possibly before year's end, there will be a bigger fleet to go, you know, connect yeah. Ceiba, Vieques, and Culebra. Does that... And I'm, confident, and I'm confident on that. Good. So does that coincide perhaps with an increase in rates and ticket rates, ticket fees? So, so, so the rates for, for, for the islanders, and again, this is ATM policy that right. we, will, we will work with them to implement. This is mm -hmm. not, HMS mm -hmm. will never set the rates mm -hmm. at all through our whole contract. Okay. You know, the government did the right thing and we, and we agreed that it was the right thing, that it wasn't up to us to set the rates. The, the, the people, the citizens of Vieques and Calabria need to be protected. You know, Matt Miller would never change the rate, but five years from now, if I retire, the new Matt Miller might say, I'm going to raise the rates. Mm -hmm. We didn't want that. We wanted protections for the people of Vieques and Calabria. And that protection is, is the government to set the rates. We can't right. unilaterally do that. Now we can recommend, and I will tell you that, you know, I do think there needs to be over time, just because everything costs more, you know, there needs to be some incremental, but tiny. And if you look at the, at the, the max, the Islander rate could increase in the 20 years that we that we, that we have the contract, it's like 60 cents over the course of 20 years. But that's years. fair because they live there. But for me, a tourist, a visitor to Vieques. But, yes. I, they're, I, they're, should, they're, I should have to pay a reasonable raise because I think $2, right? Which is the right now. Yeah, it's really low. You're it's right. very and, low. I mean, I yeah, don't like and, to pay. I don't like to pay expensive for anything, but fair, right? Right, right. And, 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 and there <laughs> is, there is, there is work for a non-resident rate to, to go into effect once ATM and us, we, we and, and the, and, and the mayors of Claver and Viegas, mm -hmm. we, we've already talked about it. We, we, we already discussed it. We want to do it right okay. to make sure that the people that live on Viegas and Calabria are never inadvertently charged the wrong rate. No, right. No, no, so no. once and we I... get that, that the... set up, uh -huh. then those rates will go into the new rates for non-residents will go into effect. Do you know the date since you've been speaking? No, I, well, what I told him, well, it, it's not that's not going to be anytime soon. Okay. You know? No, it will be this year, for example. No, be this year? no, it won't okay. be this year. No. Okay. And the reason is, is well, I believe, and, and so does ATM, is you know we have more more pressing things to worry about right now. Okay. We need to we need to fix the rate structure because it will, it's for the health of the long term of the system. But it's not something we need we need to focus our energy on right now. We do focus our energy on getting the additional vessels, getting the vessels out of the yard, getting the, getting us the, the transition to keep it on track. Then we can look at those, those. But that, with that, with that, you justify any kind of rate increase. Right. 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 It, it's hard to, and rightly so if I lived on VA Kisses or, or was a resident of, you know, taxpayer um, or a resident of, of, uh, the main island here in Puerto mm -hmm. Rico to say, mm -hmm. you're going to increase my rate, but the service isn't any better. Right. What are you doing yes. that for us? So right. that makes sense. So we're, I, I, there's I no just, plans to do that. There's no plans to do that. I don't for at all this year. I just always consider the residents of the islands because th that, yeah. you know, that, that in air is their only means on and off, you know, to get to school, to get to work for some people, to get to medical yeah. appointments. I mean, that's their only means of transportation between the, the yeah. island and Puerto Rico. Um, so yes, of course they should be considered first and given the priority, right? Right. I mean, Absolutely. You know. Okay. And we, we totally agree with that. Okay. Well, yeah. Mr. Miller, thank you so much for your time. I, I certainly thank appreciate you. it. Um, let's keep in touch for whenever these new boats, you know, get here and join the, yes. the lineup because, um, you know, it seems like the residents again, um, are screaming for, you know, more consistent and better service. Yes, like I, they have for the past 30 or 40 years. It's not new, but it needs it. It seems like it should be resolved. Right. Yeah. These people? And, and, we're, and, 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 and we're getting there. After our interview with Mr. Miller, we also reached out to Rick Newman, who's the head of Puerto Rico Fast Ferries, which also provides service to the ATM. Let's hear what he had to say. So can you tell me from your you know, from your standpoint, you know, where you are and what the service looks like um, at the moment. Sure. Good afternoon, Michelle. Uh, thank you for uh, calling. Give me the opportunity uh, to uh, uh, answer some questions for you. Uh, Puerto Rico Fast Ferry has been providing services to uh, ATM and the government since uh, 2011. 
uh, this is our seventh year uh, of uh, providing supplemental service. And in this particular round, we began in 2018 uh, with uh, four fast ferries, two brand new uh, ferries uh, and two cargo ferries. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, at the present time, uh, two vessels. Uh, one is a cargo passenger vessel <clears throat> that uh, provides supplemental service both to Vieques and to Culebra. From which, one, which one is that? Which one? Which vessel? That's is that? the Mis Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason. Okay. And, and the other is uh, the Julia, which is a, a passenger fast ferry mm -hmm. that provides uh, service to Culebra primarily. Uh, and has for a couple of years now. So we're still under contract with ATM and uh, we continue to provide service um, in the, since November uh, of last year uh, to through the end of July, uh, we moved on one vessel alone, 152,267 passengers mm. and on the other vessel, 36,042 and 15,034 vehicles on the Mason. Mm -hmm. So certainly we are uh, very uh, much a part of the Vieques and Culebra transportation system. And how long is that contract good for? I mean, are you going to be around for a while or, or, you know, what's that looking like? Well, uh, you know, I, I can't answer the question as to whether we'll be around, okay. but uh, we're, we, we, our contract has been extended to continue uh, providing uh, both of those vessels. And uh, presently they're under uh, extensions of the original contract. So whether they'll be extended again uh, is up to the government. Uh, we have been extended uh, several times over the last uh, couple of years. It's not unusual. Uh, for the base contract to end and then additional contract. But, uh, but, but the, cur the current continue. extension, the current extension is good through when? Uh, one is up in uh, September, uh, in September. Uh, well, actually, both of them are up in September. OK, uh, so, you know, what what happens after September? Uh, I, I really don't know. That's interesting because, and, and to, you know, for full disclosure's sake, I put in a call, um, a request to the ATM to get some of the answers um, to questions that mm -hmm. neither you nor, you know, HMS is, is really able to answer because the truth is that it's up to the ATM um, to run certain parts of the operation, right? But what Mil Mr. Miller mentioned was that, um, you know, quite possibly there would be nine vessels um, running the Vieques, Culebra, Ceiba routes by the end of the year. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he may have mentioned Mr. Mason and the Julia. So I'm just wondering if you've been, you know, informed about the possibility of being around till the end of the year. No, we haven't. I mean, we no. take each contract extension independently. Okay. Uh, quite frankly, you know, we, we don't provide any service other than uh, the service of providing the crew and the vessels. Uh, and I really don't know what's going on between okay. HMS and the government of Puerto Rico uh, in reference to. No, and uh, I understand. You know, I, I know, what, I know, I know that the, you know, the situation with them coming in has been kind of thorny. I understand that, but it, it just also seems to me that the, um, the Mr. Mason is um, pretty much a key part to to cargo service right between the islands yes it certainly is i mean it's a workhorse and you know we we rely heavily on it uh and it's been a a good uh, uh solid uh, vessel uh, as has the julia um, i was mm -hmm. just looking at a report and you know we you know the whole month of july without one day out of service uh you know 31 days of continual mm -hmm. service by both boats uh, you know, that's what we're there to do. And that's what we started doing in 2011. And that's what we uh, will continue to do until they stop extending our contract, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's happening with the takeover of the system? I, I have no idea. I mean, that's internal politics that, yeah. quite frankly, has not been disclosed with us at all.
fair enough fair enough i'm just also you know the other thing that we we discussed and and i wanted to also bring you into the conversation was the issue of service continuity you just mentioned now that you've gone on this stretch you know um, uninterrupted stretch which is good news not only for you as a provider but um you know, for the people of the islands who depend on this service, right? Um, right. You know, let's just let's play devil's advocate for a moment, if you if you wouldn't mind, and say that Mr. Mason and Julia are pulled from the lineup. What kind of a what kind of an effect could that have um, on the service between the island oh. and the island municipalities? I don't I don't think there's any doubt that it would be highly uh, disruptive to the transportation system. Uh, one, because, you know, the reliability of those vessels, the amount of, of, of you know, uh, traffic that we move on those vessels uh, would have to be replaced with other vessels that right now uh, doesn't appear that the system has. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, you, when, you know, that's part of the confusion of what is going on here. I think that, you know, to some degree, uh, you know, there's there's a substantial amount of confusion, and you know, I I, I visit the islands uh, and and I talk to the people on the islands, and I can tell you that, you know, they themselves are confused uh, as to what's going on. They they don't understand the integration. Uh, I believe that there's confusion as to what boats will be mm -hmm. available or won't mm -hmm. be available. I believe that they're confused as to why. Uh, you know, the big company that the government supported so much, uh, you know, has replaced uh, newer boats with old boats of 1988 and 1989 vintage that are not designed for these waters. And, you know, the people of Yekes and Culebra who rely uh, on their daily life to have transportation uh, just wonder how do you how do you rep replace uh, the, the the coastal which was built in, in 2019, uh, you, you know, or, tw in, 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 or the Scudic built in 2019 with, mm -hmm. with two old boats. And, and this is the company that, you know, is supposed to, you know, be doing bigger, better than the local company, uh, Puerto Rico Fast Ferry. So obviously that creates a lot of, you know, concern and a lot of uh, uneasiness as to the reliability of uh, you know, the next step in the transportation uh, to be provided by, you know, the government, whether it's through HMS or whoever, it, it leaves a lot of doubt. And I think people are uneasy. And I, I believe if I lived on the islands, I would be the same. I would be uneasy. How do you take out a, you know, you, the Julia uh, was built in uh, May of 2019. It's a brand mm. new boat. The motors and systems are still under you know, warranty. Mm -hmm. And and if you take that boat out, what are you going to replace it with? Uh, an old boat, 1990, 1992. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the concern that people have because, you know, they've seen this happen over the years. I think on the other side is that they're concerned about where are the ATM boats? You have uh, mm -hmm. various boats in the fleet that haven't been seen for uh, a couple of years, uh, you know, a couple of them are up in Florida. Yeah. And that's, and I'm so glad forth. you brought that up because I need to know the names of those two vessels. Do you know which, of, which those two are that are in Tampa? Ista Bonita and oh. Calle Largo. Ah, oh, wow. And those are big, big vessels, right? Those are some they're, of the bigger ones. Those are workhorses. They're big mm. boats. Uh, the, the uh, Ista Bonita is the newest boat in the ATM mm -hmm. fleet. It's a 2014 boat, uh, you know, fairly, fairly new. And, uh, you know, it's been in, in dry dock or, or mm -hmm. at least at, at a shipyard, but all those, you know, th 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 that also is a question that a lot of people ask me when I'm seen in the Island, because obviously everybody knows me on yeah, those islands. Yeah. They come up to me and say, you know, why does an ATM have their boats? Where are the boats? Uh, mm -hmm. What's going on? Why did why did our government or ATM let this company come in and provide us these old boats? And mm -hmm. and you know why aren't you guys being contracted to stay on longer? And you know I mean I th I think these are these are not extraordinary questions. They're they're legitimate questions. If you right. live on those islands and you depend on 
boats for transportation, uh, it would be logical that you would be asking those questions, Michelle. Yeah, no. And, you know, I participate in several uh, groups in social media that are run by uh, residents of the islands. And there, it seems to me, and I don't live there or, you know, I only go visit it one, every once in a while, but it seems to me that their concerns are legitimate um, as residents of the two islands who can only either, you know, go out, you know, get off the island on a, on a boat or, you know, on a plane. Um, so right. any kind of disruption is, is significant um, and serious. The other thing that, that, you know, is mentioned often, and I know that you probably have nothing and no control over the situation, but it's the ticketing um, system. Um, people are bring up, you know, quite often the issue of, you know, how tickets are sold to whom and when. Um, mm -hmm. You know, is that something that you have anything to do with at all? No, we've never had anything to do with the ticketing. Uh, it's always been an ATM function. Okay. Uh, and in the RFP, uh, we uh, included in the P3 a proposal we made one of the best systems uh, for this type of a, a ferry operation, having worked in the operation for six or seven years mm -hmm. uh, and knowing what all the issues and parameters are, the types of travelers and how they travel and how they travel their, their construction materials and their goods and services. Uh, we obviously had all that information. So we ensured that we uh, selected and designed for that uh, purpose a uh, ticketing system. Unfortunately, in the evaluation process, uh, the evaluators of the committee uh, gave us no credit uh, oh. for that system, uh, which, you know, could be from, you know, one, uh, the fact that they didn't understand what we wrote. Uh, number mm. two, maybe uh, there were influences that, quite frankly, you know, the decision had already been made, which is what we're hearing more and more, that it didn't matter what we wrote. Mm. Uh, the decision was going to be made for somebody other than us. Uh, but I can tell you that People are totally disturbed with what they've seen in the last uh, six weeks from the new system that was installed. Uh, the new ticketing system, uh, quite frankly, uh, does not appear to be that much different than what was there before. Uh, I believe that there are many components of that system uh, that could have made uh, the transition uh, much better uh, with a ticketing system that far beyond well, what I'm, I'm seeing now. So maybe it's because, you know, the new system has not been totally integrated. Maybe right. it's because that's what I was going to say. Apparently maybe it has ATM, software problems. Yeah. And apparently the yeah. ATM is also still running the ticketing system. Um, there's a new well, platform. I don't know if they run the, the ticket. System. I don't know who runs the ticket system in terms of who sells the tickets. Right, I, I right. believe that the, the system there, the software that was put in, I believe is a new software. If that's the case, it has some deficiencies. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 the, and, and the deficiencies, you know, when, you know, the whole system collapses when you have, for instance, somebody gets on a boat, a party of four, five, six people get on a boat that's supposed to be going to Culebra. Uh, their tickets say, you know, uh, that they're going to Vieques. And they're going to Vieques. They're not going mm -hmm. to Culebra. They mm -hmm. got on the wrong boat. Well, that shouldn't happen. <clears throat> the mm -hmm. system has to be such to avoid people getting on the wrong boat. Because if your destination is Culebra, yeah, you, you shouldn't be get going on to Vieques. Vieques. Right. Yeah. And, and the problem right. with that is, you know, you, you, one says, well, easy, you know, get off and get on the other boat. Well, that doesn't happen so easy because no. people have to, they get all their luggage. They have to claim all their stuff. Sometimes you have to move a lot of baggage to get to the people's baggage because it's hidden behind other people's baggage. And so what happens is you have a delay in the departure uh, and a delay in the departure screws up the entire itinerary for the rest of the day. These are things that the property, proper ticketing system, ticket collection, ticket review uh, and accountability all prevent uh, this from happening. I mean, how, how many times at an airport do you see people get on the wrong airplane? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, you know, you, you're going to Florida seven. and you get you yeah. get on an, on an airplane to New York. That doesn't happen. Yeah. So why 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 does it happen here? And it, it well, shouldn't. And the, so obviously, and the other it, thing obviously is, there's yeah. some deficiencies. Yeah. And I believe the they, the people of Vieques and Culebra have witnessed it. 
And the other thing is that, you know, there, as far as I know, there isn't a route connecting Vieques to Culebra directly. That route doesn't exist. It used to, mm -hmm. right? But there is no maritime route between Vieques and Culebra right now. Not officially. Right. I, at least since I've been in the system since 2011, I haven't seen a oh. route uh, that uh, route that takes you Vieques to Culebra. I believe that was tried. Uh, sometime I was told in the 80s and yeah, parts and it's in, 90s. And it's fairly didn't work. There, or, yeah. No, there's yeah. not enough traffic uh, between the two islands to warrant uh, connectivity oh. on, a, on a routine basis. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, there have been triangulations done where because of the shortage of equipment, you have had a boat that's had to go to Vieques and from Vieques it goes to Culebra, picks up people and, and comes to, to, to mm -hmm. Fard or mm -hmm. Seba. Uh, but those were, those were exceptional situations for the good of the system because of the lack of equipment. But on a regular basis, I would say that the cost of running that route and yeah, maintaining the route, mm -hmm. there's not, it's, it's, it's not cost effective. And, and the other thing is, uh, the sea conditions are typically from east to west, and when you're uh -huh. when you're going when you're going south towards north you know, from Vieques on, uh, to to Culebra, uh, that's a very rocky road because you're taking the waves on the starboard side of the mm -hmm. vessel, uh, mm -hmm. and it makes the vessel uh, rock instead yeah, of going, yeah. you know, right. uh, uh, bow to stern. It's uh, port to starboard. Yeah, and that's that's very, a very, very rough ride. <laughs> it's a that rough, ride. A rough so, ride. So it's not really something that, uh, you know, I, I would recommend on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And if you go to smaller vessels, because you're going to meet the lower, you know, volume of people, then 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 that ride is even worse. And you still have the, all the costs involved of insurance and fuel and and employees so mm -hmm. you know downsizing the boat doesn't necessarily solve the problem but again these are all things that atm uh has to study and determine you know what the what the revenue protect you know uh, uh potential is mm -hmm. and see you know what works for them right now uh you know their best shot is to get their boats back in order get in service mm -hmm. uh you know our boats for instance uh the mason is a great boat and it does, you know, it's job like, like did the Cade and the Evan, other boats we've had here, but it, it, it's, it, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a solve it's a the immediate gap. problem. Yeah. 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 Because, because quite frankly, you know, they, they, they shouldn't be using or spending all the money on the barge, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because that's a very inconvenient and, and, and quite frankly, antiquated method. Uh, to to transport uh, vehicles and goods and services, because if you had your big boats, the Ista Bonita, the Isleño, the Cayo Largo, mm -hmm. you would have sufficient cargo space and capacity tonnage, as we call it. You would have enough tonnage capacity that you would not need the barge. And when you mm -hmm. think of the fact that the barge can do one trip to Culebra with maybe 50, 60 vehicles, the fact of the matter is that if you have one uh, large vessel, you not only transport hundreds of passengers, but in three or four trips, you can do a lot more than 60 mm -hmm. uh, vehicles. So in essence, on a, in a 24 hour circle cycle, you're much better using a Mr. Mason, a, a, a an Isleño, a Cayo Largo or a Isla Bonita than mm -hmm. you are one trip uh, on the barge. So, you know, there's, there's a, an economy of scale that needs to be considered and they need to get their fleet up. I, I've seen some very positive changes in ATM over the last couple of months. Hopefully oh, yeah? they'll stay, mm. hopefully they'll stay in that mode. I, I believe that, you know, they're doing the best they can now to stick to an itinerary. They're doing the best they can to get the boats off the dock on time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're running probably more, uh, v, more, more, trips totally all mm -hmm. all boats together to those islands than historically they've ever had uh, mm -hmm. are they spending more money than they ever had probably because the more vessels you have and the more trips you do the more fuel you burn the more crews you have the more mm -hmm. you know et cetera, et cetera. plus i assume they're paying us they're paying hms plus they're paying all their own operation i would imagine if anybody ever totaled 
all of that money up, it's probably a historical amount of dollars for the operation of the ATM. Well, but the, the, the thing is that at the end of the day, it's, um, it's a basic service, right? I mean, it's not even, it's not even a luxury no, a, or an option. It's, it's a lifeline service. So right. Michelle, the word right. is lifeline. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the lifeline between two disconnected islands uh, to, to the main island. It's a connectivity a lifeline for students, for, for mm -hmm. medical purposes, mm -hmm. for goods, uh, for, for retail. It, it, it is an essential component that cannot be uh, just turned over just because the government decided that it was going to privatize. There's, this, is, this is a process that needs a lot more diligence and thinking, auditing and review, because I can tell you that uh, from where I sit now, I think that they're going to be surprised at what this whole system is going to cost them. And that a lot of what was said in the RFP process uh, was nothing more than smoke and mirror. It, it will mm. not come to fruition. All That's right. my opinion. Well, you know, we'll see what happens again. Um, you know, there were some kind of predictions from now through year's end about what the service could look like. Um, everybody sure. knows that December is a busy month for tourism. Um, Correct. And, and that's something that, you know, both island municipalities have been looking to um, recover, you know, not only because of the um, damage caused by Hurricane Maria, um, but also, you know, ob the obvious pandemic situation. I mean, it, it's been, a, it's been a tough, um, couple of years for the islands oh definitely um, no no doubt about it i mean the islands have been challenged i think we're seeing now a higher volume of travelers uh, than uh, we typically saw for you know, the past year plus uh, when we were under covid restrictions i mean we're still doing sanitizing after each uh, mm -hmm. leg of we're still following you know the mass uh, mandate uh, it's not a mandate. It's our mandate. We're making sure that people wear their mask and we're mm. very strict about it. And uh, we're wiping down all the seats with uh, with sanitizers after every mm -hmm. trip, uh, all the tables and desks. We're, we're sanitizing the air because obviously you're in a closed in environment. And so all those components are very important for us right now for the protection of our, well, of and our I, crew. And I'm well, sure, you know. and you're probably working with municipal authorities um, on both islands because I know Vieques has been um, pretty um, adamant about their vaccinations and keeping their population healthy. So I'm just wondering how much of what you're doing is in line with what the municipality um, wants to happen. I think, I think it is. And, and I think the municipalities need to stay rigid on, on the COVID restrictions and the mm -hmm. COVID uh, prevention. Uh, I, I think I commend uh, ATM and the government for having been able to have uh, the National Guard since the very beginning of COVID in March of 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, they continue to be there. They have a presence. They're doing all their checking. They're doing, you know, all the, you know, they, all of what they need to do. And hopefully uh, ATM and the, and the government will continue to have that relationship with the, uh, with the National Guard, because I think it has been a great protection, not only for our crew members, but also for the people that travel on our boats to and from those islands. Just for the record, we want to let our audience know that we did reach out to the ATM to get some of the questions that came up answered. However, they didn't return our requests for interviews.